Yeah, the time I felt most alone was for sure when uh, when my brother passed away, just because um, that was my best friend. Most of my life, I had spent just shutting people out. I was in a very negative mindset, like uh, during basketball, I missed a shot, and then I'd be out of the game because I'm too busy to focus on the shot I missed. So I went through that dark time and turned my back on everything, and I got introduced to the Lord again by going to the Cove. It brought me to where I am here today, where I'm you know, serving on, on an ushering team. You know, they're, they're literally like a second family. I could reach out to them for anything. Having good, godly friends is a, a major thing. Having people to encourage you, even when you um, are not so sure about the next step. Being able to um, lean on somebody or being able to talk to somebody. You know, I could not have done life a few years ago without my life group. You start going through life together. It's the ups, the downs, the cancers, the trials, the losses, the, the illnesses, the good times, the bad times. You just, you're there for each other. And it's a, it's a really cool thing. All right, what's up? How's everybody doing today? Come on. Hope you guys are ready for Christmas at the Cove. Can I just go ahead and give a big thanks, a big shout out to every single person, every team member, every volunteer that was here to make all of our campuses just beautiful and ready to go for Christmas at the Cove. So come on, let's give those guys a hand right now. Thank you guys so much for all that you do and the way you serve here at the Cove Church. And uh, I want to jump in today and I want to ask you guys a question. How many of you guys have ever made plans in your life and you like dotted your I's, you crossed your T's, you did everything possible to put this plan in place. And then all of a sudden, kind of like the rug got pulled out for, uh, from under you and it's like, this did not go according to plan. I believe many of us have been there. So um, this definitely happens to me quite often, quite a bit. But I remember um, a long time ago when I was a young Sixth grade boy. So go back with me to that time when I planned and I'd put something in place to get my very first kiss. Come on, let's go. Y'all been there. Don't act like you haven't. Planned on getting my first kiss. So I knew this girl for quite some time now. And I put a plan in place. I spent all week going, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is how it's going to work out. And so we got off the bus together at the same time because our parents worked at the same school. So every day we'd get off the bus. So my plan was this. We get off the bus. I get her into the gymnasium where no one was. Yeah. Yeah. So I get her all by herself. And then I'm going to be like, use some like smooth talk and be like, hey, you want to shoot some ball? Something like that. Something stupid as a sixth grade boy would do. So we're going to shoot ball together. And then we're going to go to the bleachers. We're going to sit down on the bleachers. I'm going to put my arm around her. She's going to look at me. I'm going to look at her. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to get that magical first kiss. Like music was going to be playing. Fireworks were going off. Her foot's going to go up like that. It's just going to be amazing, right? So that day, the plan was in place, and I was ready to go. So everything was working out just how I planned. So we got off the bus. We go in to the gym. We're all by ourselves. We shoot ball. Then we go, actually go to the bleachers. We sit down, right? We sit down. I put my arm around her. She turns towards me. I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. We're gazing into each other's eyes. And I go in. It didn't work out how you think, okay? It did not. My plan didn't work out. Immediately, she jumped up. Her eyes got like this big around. She jumped up and she took off running through the gym doors and down the hallway. And I'm just like this, no, no, while she's running. And I'm like, I'm totally devastated. Number one, I'm scared because I'm like, I don't know what just happened. I'm afraid, she, like I got this fear. I don't know what she's going to do. Is she going to tell her friends? I'm absolutely devastated. I'm thinking, I'll never kiss anybody the rest of my life. Like I, I was in that moment. But listen, don't worry about me. It's okay. Because I came up with another game plan 
This time it worked. I ended up getting married to that girl. Hey. <laughs> but isn't that life so many times that we put plans in place and we think it's going to work out like this, but it doesn't. Like it doesn't. Like last week, some of you put plans in place and it didn't work out how you planned. Thanksgiving dinner. Like you were going to be, it's going to be quiet. It's just going to be a few family members, not those crazy ones that come in and just create chaos all the time. That crazy uncle, that crazy aunt, you know you've got them. Some of you got some of those crazy cousins that show up. They showed up out of nowhere. Everything went wild. It wasn't how it was planned. And then they said, we'll see you at Christmas. Oh gosh, no. Lord, please no. Don't let that happen. That's not the plan I had in place. Some of you ladies, you spent all day cooking, all day cooking, and getting that turkey to be perfect, to be the best turkey that you ever cooked in your entire life. You get it out of the oven, and it's golden brown. It looks so beautiful. You put it on the table. Everyone's eating. You look over at your husband, and he has this stupid look on his face. And you're like, honey, what's wrong? Do you, is the turkey good? Well, it's a little dry. Deep down, you're like, I hope you choke on a bone right now. You've done it and you've said it. Don't think you haven't. Like, you're like, oh, you're just frustrated. That didn't go how you planned. You were um, wanting to get your Christmas tree up and your decorations. And guess what? It's still in the garage. It's still in the attic. It's like my plans are not going how I thought they would. And today we're going to learn from someone whose plans definitely changed. The plans that they had for their life didn't work out how they thought that it was going to. And we're going to learn this from the life of Mary, who is the actual mother of Jesus, where her plans didn't go how she thought that they would. So Mary, she gets a, a visit from an angel. And today we're going to learn about two words that the angel said to Mary, that Mary was able to respond in a way that I think will help us in life will help us when we have plans that are not in order, that they don't go how we thought they would. And those two words are this, fear and favor. Fear and favor. And just a little bit of a background, like Luke chapter 1 is the beginning, like of the, the New Testament. It's the beginning of like the Christmas story. Because think about this, the Old Testament, the book of Malachi was the last uh, book that was written until this point in time. And then it's been 400 years of silence from God. And then boom, all of a sudden, here's this conversation that takes place that starts out with the Christmas story. So it's going to be on the screen. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 1. I'm going to read this and start in verse 28. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. So there's that fear and favor. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high, and the Lord will give to him the throne of the father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am? am a virgin? I think that's a legitimate question from Mary. Like, think about this. Mary, right now, she is engaged to Joseph. She is to be wed to Joseph. So Mary already has the bling on her finger. She has the caterer picked out, the venues all set. She said yes to the dress. The Pinterest board is full of nothing but wedding. Then boom, out of, all of a sudden, here comes this angel out of nowhere, says, fear not, for you are favored. Now, can you imagine what Mary was thinking? Like how scared, how frustrated, how aggravated, um, the fear that had already set in, the different emotions that she was already thinking. Number one, it was scary because the angel showed up. Now, we know this if you read Scripture, that um, an angel is not a big chubby baby that comes around floating on a cloud. Because every time that you read in Scripture, they show up. What's the first thing they say? Fear not. The first thing they say, fear not. So apparently they must be really, really intimidating. So all of a sudden Mary's got all these emotions and all these fear and all these things going on in her life. So think about that. So talk about fear for a second. 
Number one, the angel showed up, fear. Number two, she's just worried uh, and thinking about her marriage, being ready to be married. Now all of a sudden the angel says, nope, boom, and you're going to have a baby and it's not going to be by Joseph. How crazy is that? And I think so many times in our lives what happens is when our plans change and we have this unknown that's happening in our life, all of a sudden fear starts to set in. So point number one, I want you to write this down. When plans change, fear follows. When plans change, fear follows. How many times has this ever played out in your life? It plays out a lot in our life, that we have this fear. We have all these emotions that just come at us because we don't know what to do. We don't know where to turn. There's all this unknown. You know, earlier I talked about some of the funny things like, you know, the turkey and the Christmas tree and all that stuff like that that you put in plan, place. But what happens when it actually hits hard at home? What act, when it actually, like, this is really devastating. Like, think about it. You, had, um, you didn't plan on the, the doctor's visit to go the way you thought. You didn't plan on being a single parent. You didn't plan as a college student to go to, to school for four years and then you get out and it's like, I planned on doing this one thing. Now I'm not even doing anything that was close to my major. You're in middle school and you're in high school and you're like, I planned for this year to turn out different than it was last year. And you're like, it's still the same. My plans haven't worked out. So for you, go ahead and fill in the blank. What is it right now that your plans changed and fear has followed you. Fear is a part of your life. August 25th, 1973, my mom, she goes into labor at the hospital and she had a, a rough pregnancy at the end. And my dad and my grandpa, they were all out in the waiting room. And actually about that time, my grandma was actually in the hospital as well because of all the stress of the pregnancy from my mom. So during labor, after a couple hours, the nurse, she walks out and she's like, hey, um, I'm looking for the Porter family. And my daddy raises his hand and she walks over to him and she says, Mr. Porter, I'm, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but your child didn't make it. Now think about that. All these emotions, all this fear, all this frustration aggravated at that moment, at that moment in time. So the nurse walks back through the hospital doors and they're trying to figure out this, what it's gonna look like, what this is gonna be. It's this fear of the unknown. Five minutes later, five minutes later, the nurse walks back out into the waiting room and comes up to my dad and says, Mr. Porter, I apologize, I'm so sorry. It was not your child, it was someone else's child. Your child is okay, they're fine. Think how crazy that would have been at that moment. Think about the emotions that my family felt at that moment. There was so much stress happening and everything going on. But I think that's life. Like it's up and down. There's, there's on the mountaintop, there's valleys, there's good, there's bad, there's happy, there's sad. This happens so much in our life. So much frustration, so much fear that goes on in our lives. And what happens is fear starts to wreck our emotions. And think about Mary for just a second. Think about what she just heard from the angel and what she was having to deal with, what she was having to think about. Number one, the fear that was taking place, the unknown that was happening because her family could have disowned her. Her community could have disowned her. She could have actually been stoned. Not the stone that some of you are thinking about right now. Somebody just raised up and was like, <laughs> did he say stoned? <laughs> like, anyway, just go with me. But she could have actually been stoned, put to death. So think about what she was feeling. Here's the deal. She still had to have a conversation with Joseph. She still had to convince Joseph what the angel had just told her. So can you imagine what that conversation was like? Hey, um, so Jojo... Uh, I'll give you a little nickname. So Jojo, what had happened was, was this angel appeared out of nowhere, said that um, to fear not, but he also said that I'm favored and said that I was going to have a baby, but it's not going to be by you. Wow, that was an amazing conversation, I'm sure, that just took place. Like it was like just turned in to Mari Povich's show on steroids. 
It really did. Like, think about what they were going through. And think about Joseph, what he had to be feeling at that time. And we know exactly what he thought because if you go to Matthew chapter 1, it talks about how he was going to end the relationship with Mary because he was mad. He was upset. But if you read, we know that the angel visited him in a dream and told him, hey, we want you to stay with Mary. And that's exactly what, what Joseph did. So just think about that for a second of all the things that Mary was feeling. But if you really look into this verse, it blows my mind, Mary's response to the angel. Her response, I know what mine would have been at that moment when we have that fear and frustration. The first thing we do, and I'm preaching to myself right now, the first thing we say is, why God? Why God? Mary doesn't do that. If you look in verse 34, she says, how? She doesn't say why, but she says how. So many times when these things happens in, happen in our life, what we do is go, we just get frustrated and mad at people or ourselves, and we say, God, why? We get mad at God. God, why am I going through this? God, you know this is not the right time for me to go, go through this. God, why did this happen in my life? Why did I lose so many people and so much family members? Why did that happen? Why do I have to go through that? But what would it look like if we changed our mindset? Instead of going, why God? Why is this happening, God? Then how, God, can you use this for your purpose? How, God, can you use this for your purpose? purpose because I know you have a plan for me. That's so hard because we read Jeremiah 29 11. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And I know some of you are saying this right now. I have that verse on a picture frame in my house. I drink out of a coffee cup that says Jeremiah 29, 11. But you know what? It still hurts. There's still pain. There's still fear. There's still frustration in my life. How do I go from why to how? And we have to read uh, verse 12, 13, and 14 in Jeremiah, Jeremiah because we just skip over those. We don't even know what those are, what those verses are. But this is what he says. Verse 12, in those days when you pray, I will listen. How many times have you ever been in a situation in your life where you have distractions, you have fear, you have a change of plans, and instead of going and praying to God, we try to fix it ourselves. We try to do our own thing, try to fix it ourselves, and he's just saying, all I want you to do, I want you to pray. Because he says, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. What he is saying, I will never leave you. I am always there. I will never forsake you. I am always there. Even in the difficult situations that you are facing right now, he is there, but we have to change our mindset. We have to change our mindset. You're walking in a difficult situation, and you're saying, what I'm going through is impossible to overcome. What I am going through is impossible to overcome. How many of you guys are there? You don't have to raise your hand, but you're there right now. See, impossible is where God starts because miracles are who God is. Impossible is where God starts because miracles are who God is. Because here's the deal. Some of you are sitting here right now, and it's a miracle that you are here. You did not plan to be here. You did not plan to accept Jesus to be the leader of your life. At some point in time in your life, you said, I don't want anything to do with Christ. I don't want anything to do with church. But that one day you showed up and you stepped in and you were waiting on the lightning bolt. You were waiting on the, the church um, roof to collapse on you because you're like, I've done too much. There's no way, but you wanted to find out about this Jesus guy. And what happened, you said, there's no way. It's going to be impossible for me to ever accept him to be the leader of my life. But you are here. God showed up. He showed out. And it is a miracle that you are in your, this place right now. Some of you had a bad doctor's appointment years ago. The doctor said, you're only going to make it six months. That was years ago. You are still here because God showed up and showed out in your life. Some of you had an addiction. Your marriage 
was like, there's no way I can overcome this addiction. There's no way this marriage will ever work out. But God showed up. He showed out. It's a miracle that you are still married, that things have taken place and God showed up in your life. That's where we need to change our mindset because he has a plan and he has a purpose. Proverbs 19, 21 says, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. And you can write this down. We may not know or understand the purpose, but we can trust God in the process. We may not know or understand the purpose, but we can trust God in the process. It's my second point. When plans change, live in favor, not fear. When plans change, live in favor, not fear. The angel tells Mary two times that she is favored. The Bible talks about being favored almost 70 times. But what does that actually mean? We hear so many people say, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. But what does that actually mean? And I want, I want to ask you a question. Right now, in the season of life that you are in right at this very second, you don't have to raise your hands, but right at this very second, do you feel like you are truly blessed and do you feel like you are favored? Do you feel blessed right now and do you feel favored? I think that we, when we think about being blessed and being favored, we think that it's a lot of times about seasons of our life. Like this season of my life, I felt blessed. I felt favored. Last week was a good week, so I felt blessed. This day was a good day, so I feel like I had the favor of God that day. And many of us see it as like um, a good parking spot that I'm favored. Like Black Friday shopping. How many of you guys went Black Friday shopping this past week? There's a few crazy people in this room right now. Y'all are crazy. So you went, so this is what many of us would say would be blessed in a favored day. You go Black Friday shopping. It's crazy. You're trying to find a parking spot. Someone pulls out right at the front door and you actually drive right up and you get that front parking spot. And you're like, oh my gosh, I am blessed right now. I find the favor of God right now because this is not, I can't believe this happened. You walk in to get presents. You buy stuff. It ended up being 50% off than what you thought it would be. You save so much money and you walk out going, I can't believe it. I feel blessed. I feel favored. You get home from shopping that day. Your kids, they're not fighting. They're hugging each other. The brother and sister are hugging each other. You're like, this is not normal. And they look at you and they say, Mom, looks like you've had a rough day of shopping. Why don't you go take a two-hour nap? Would you not be like, oh my gosh, this is, this is blessed and highly favored day right here. You go take a two-hour nap. While you are asleep, your husband wraps all the packages. Can I get an amen from the ladies? That's just what you want. You would be like, man, that would be a blessed and highly favored day. Or some of you guys, you, you love watching football. You watch football. Your wife comes. She sits right beside you while you're watching the game. And she's just watching the game. She doesn't open her mouth. <laughs> Guys, please don't be like smiling right now. Please don't. And like she watches the game. She doesn't open her mouth. She doesn't ask any questions about what's actually happening during the game. The only question she asks, she says, hey, honey, what would you like for me to cook you for dinner? You're probably step back and go, Jesus is about to return. <laughs> what is happening right now? You would say, I am blessed and highly favored at this very moment. Here's the deal. Yes, being blessed and favored can be a parking spot. It can be all that, but it's so much more than that. Here's the deal. Many of us don't feel, that we don't feel that we're blessed. We don't feel like we're favored. But can I tell you, every single one of us, we are blessed and we are favored in this place today. Every single one of us. And this is why, because of God's grace, because of his mercy, because of his love, and because of his forgiveness. That's why we all have favor on our life. But so many times we don't understand what that is because this is what we think a lot of times. We think that, um, we think that being favored is something different. See, favored isn't favorite. Favored isn't favorite. 
How many times have we ever looked on somebody's life and what they have is what we want? Man, they've got a better and bigger house than me. I guess God doesn't love me. I'm not blessed. I'm not favored. They've got the car, the truck, the boat that we want. And it's like, no, I guess that, I guess that they're just blessed and highly favored. And we become so frustrated with that, but that's not what favored is. It's not, it's not favorites. God's not playing favorites. And so many times what happens on the reverse side of that, we are getting blessed with all these things that God's giving us. We do have the house. We do have the car. We have all these things. And what happens is we become closed handed and we keep all this stuff to ourselves and we sit back and we go, oh my gosh, I've got all these blessings. God has put favor on my life. I have all these things. And you're accumulating all this stuff in your life. But God's saying, hey, you can't be closed-handed because that's not who I am. I am open-handed. So for some of us today that God has blessed us, he's given us a way to, to be able to take care of our families and to have financial freedom in our lives. And he's not saying, hey, keep that to yourselves. He's saying, hey, I want you to be open-handed because that's who I am. You have a neighbor that's hurting. You have a family member who's going through something difficult, a difficult season in their life. I want you to bless them. And I just want to give a big shout out one more time for those of you who, who um, participate in the toy store. It blows my mind that every year that we give out 1,500 to 2,000 gifts to families who are in need. So if that's you, give yourself a hand right now. God is going to do something through those gifts. And you may be saying, I don't have anything to give. I'm barely able to pay for my house. I'm barely able to pay for my car. I don't have the finances to do anything for anyone else. Do you know that you can bless someone with just your smile? With just your smile. Do you know that there's people around you every day that have probably went a week or two weeks and nobody has ever smiled or asked how they were doing? It's some of the simple things. I was talking to someone the other day, and they said that they went up and they hugged someone. They give them a hug. That person steps back and says, oh, my gosh, you don't know how that blessed me today. And they were like, "Why? Well, I just gave you a hug. They said, that's the first hug I've had all week. And people are living that out right now. Now, I'm not telling you to go to Walmart or Target today and go hug someone that you don't know and then blame it on the pastor when you get punched. Like, I'm not saying that. But you are around people at your workplace in school that are going through something difficult. You may not be able to financially help them, but you can bless them and say, hey, I'm going to pray for you at this moment. I'm going to do some of these things for you at this moment. Give them a smile. Give them a hug. Because we can all do that. And 2 Corinthians 9, 8 just talks about this. This is, and God will generously provide all you need. What is all you need? Favor. Then you will always have everything you need. What is that? Everything you need, that is favor. And plenty left over to share with others. What he is saying, I've given you so much every single day. You may not realize it, but your cup is overflowing with the blessings and favor that I'm giving you. So share it with others. Favor is this. Favor is the guarantee of God's presence in our lives. Favor is the guarantee of God's presence in our lives. That is knowing that God is for me, not against me that he is always there, that he will never leave me. That's what favor is, is the guarantee of God's presence in our lives. Think about this with Mary for a second. You would think, okay, Mary is, is favored. And you would say, okay, if she's favored, then I would expect something. Like if I am favored and I'm carrying Jesus, then I should expect everything to be taken care of. Everything should be easy from here on out. But as it wasn't, Mary had to ride on a donkey nine months pregnant. Mary had to go out and Mary had to actually have Jesus around farm animals. It was like, that doesn't sound or look like favor to me. But here's what Mary was able to understand, that God had a, a purpose and a plan in her life, and she was faithful. She didn't understand the plan. She didn't understand the purpose. But through all of this, she was faithful. Even during the times of the difficult seasons in our lives, we may not know the plan, we may not know the purpose, but we have to understand that he's faithful. During the bad doctor's visit, during the 
time of life where you have the financial difficulties, during the time of loneliness, during the time when your child has ran away from the church, like through all these things that you're going through, that we have to understand that he is there for us. We have to have a different mindset. We have to have the mindset of, you know what? No matter what is going on, he has a plan. He has a purpose in my life, and I am favored in all things. We have to wake up in the morning. When we open our eyes, we open our eyes. We say, you know what? I am blessed, and I am favored today. I was able to walk from my bedroom into my kitchen. Guess what? I am favored. I was able to go and get in my car and drive somewhere. Guess what? I am favored. I am able to be here in church today, sitting here, breathing, listening, seeing. Guess what? I am favored. Look at your neighbor and say, I am favored. Look at the neighbor you didn't want to look at the first time and say, you are favored. We have to become favor-minded. But so many times in life, this is what we do. We have the expectation when we wake up in the morning, you know what? I wake up, the expectation of my life today that today is just going to stink. Today is just going to be a bad day. I'm already expecting to walk into the workplace. My job, my job and everything's going to be a mess. My boss is going to be stupid. My coworkers are going to be gossiping. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get bullied. Someone's going to say something about me. So I'm already expecting a bad day. What about if we changed our vocabulary from, okay, I'm already expecting a bad day to be like, you know what, God, I don't know what the day holds. It may be good. It may be bad, but I know that you have a plan and purpose in my life, and I'm going to walk in that freedom today that you have given me. What would it look like if we did that? It would change our mind because we have so many people that do this, and you know them, and it may be you yourself, that you talk about the story of your life. Well, that's just the story of my life. When it rains, it pours. That's just my life, that it's all raining and storming on me. Like it's just a story of my life. Financial difficulties, yeah, I can expect it because that's the story of my life. I'm going through something difficult, yeah, it's just the story of my life. I don't have money, that's the story of my life. I'm going through this right now. Yep, I just expect it because that's a story of my life. If that is the story of your life, then you need to get a new author. Because what is happening is the enemy, you are allowing the enemy to write your story. You are allowing the enemy to write your story and to say, you know what? You're not worthy. You know what? You're going to have a ba bad day. You know what? This is actually going to happen to you. So what we need to do is start letting God write our story every single day and say, you know what? I may not understand the plan. I may not understand the process, but I am going to trust and I'm going to be faithful to you, God. And we see this all throughout scripture. I'm getting ready to show you in a second, but Mary does this. Mary does this in her life. But right, I want some of you to write this down before we get into that verse. This is one of those sayings that you just put as a post-it note by your bed on your bathroom mirror, in your car, at your workplace, at your school. And this is an actual declaration that you will speak every single day. So it says this, I will not stay in fear. I will not stay in fear. I will live in favor and I will walk in faith. I will not stay in fear. I will live in favor and I will walk in faith. That's exactly what Mary does. She doesn't know the plan. She doesn't know the future. She doesn't know what's going to happen. But here in this verse, she says this. The angel says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary's saying, I don't understand it. I don't know what's going to happen. But God, I know you're in control. I know you have a plan. And that's what Mary's saying. And this is where we see it all throughout Scripture. We see so many times in Scripture where people were walking in fear. They had fear because they didn't understand the plan. But what they did, they were able to step in and start walking in faith. David planned on being a shepherd his entire life. Saul planned on killing Christians. The young boy planned on a simple lunch. Moses planned on hiding in the hills. Mary planned on a simple life with Joseph. Every one of them had fear. 
But God had a plan and he had a purpose. And that purpose was this. David killed Goliath and became king. Saul became Paul and preached in the name of Jesus and thousands were saved. The young boy through Jesus fed 5,000. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt with a stick as he parted the Red Sea. Mary gave birth to the Savior of the world who would die a brutal death on a cross where death could not hold him down and he would be raised on the third day because Jesus had a plan, he had a purpose, and that plan and purpose was salvation and he had us in mind. And I want to tell someone today you're struggling this Christmas season. Because you have difficulties. You have fear in your life. You are frustrated. You are aggravated because it didn't work out how you planned. And it's like, I'm not hearing from God. I'm not hearing from him. I don't, I don't think he loves me. I don't think he cares for me. Can I tell you this today? It's very simple. I just want to tell you, and I want you to get this. God loves you. In his eyes, you are worthy. It doesn't matter what you did last week, last year, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, last night, this morning. It doesn't matter. He loves you unconditionally. So we need to, to wake up and say, you know what? Yeah, I messed up, but I've got the favor of God. I'm going through this difficult time, but you know what? I don't know the plan. I don't know the purpose, but I'm going to step in to what his word is telling me. And many of us need to do that. Because favor is free, and it comes through salvation. Favor is free, and it comes through salvation. If everyone just go ahead and stand to your feet. We're going to go to him in prayer. If you would go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes just for a second. I believe that there's a couple of different people in this room right now. That for you, you're a Christ follower. You've been following Jesus for a long time now, but fear seems to just follow you all the time. All the time. You're like, I'm a Jesus follower, but I don't know what it is. I, I still have this fear. I still have this frustration in my life. But today, I want you to step up, and I want you to just to have that courage and say, you know what? I may not understand the plans, but I'm not going to let fear wreck my emotions. I'm going to walk and step into his favor because I am am favored today and if that's you and you're a Christ follower and you're struggling right now and you have some fear in your life would you just raise your hand along with me and just say hey I'm dealing with some junk like right now in my life I've got the bad doctor's diagnosis I've got some financial things going on in my life I've got this fear in my life I just want to pray for us right now God we just come to you right now and I thank you and I praise you for who you are God, I just want to pray for every single person that they have their hand up right now, that they're going through something in their life. They're, they've got fear. They've got frustration. They have some things that's happening. And God, I just want to pray that they have courage to open their eyes every single day and say, I am blessed and I am favored today. And that they have the courage to walk in that every day, that they come to you every single day in prayer and say, God, I need, I need you. I know you were there for me. You can put your hands down if that's you and while we remain in an attitude of prayer. Maybe for some of you, you're, you've not been to church in a long time or you've been coming because you're trying to figure out this whole Jesus thing and you're thinking, hey, the things that I've done in the past that there's no way God would ever love me, that he would ever care for me, that, that he would ever take me in. I'm here to tell you that he loves you no matter what. That he loves you unconditionally in this place today and you can walk in that favor that he has for every single one of us because of his grace, because of his mercy, and because of his unconditional love for all of us in this room. So if that's you and you are ready to step into that and ask Jesus to be the leader of your life, don't worry about what anyone is thinking beside you. This is just between you and God right now at this very moment. So if you are ready to accept Jesus to be the leader of your life, I just want you to have boldness and courage, and I just want to raise your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. Just raise your hand up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
18, 19, 20. Come on, can we celebrate what God is doing in here today? Come on, let's go to him in prayer right now. Let's say this prayer together. God, today, I choose you to be the leader of my life. God, forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, I will walk in faith and I will live in your favor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody in the house said, amen. Come on, let's celebrate what God is doing here one more time. <laughs>